can we discuss pregnancy in the midst of weight loss journey? Overcoming the, the, the psychological food anxiety, as Lauren pointed out last week, while not justifying extra food or treats just because you're pregnant, not uh, pushing past your physical limits or expecting a deficit when your hormones are haywire. Also, finding a health tracker that is pregnancy friendly and not driving yourself crazy psychologically by staring at red numbers on my fitness pal or watching the constant rising graph on happy scale. Yes, I will admit that I am one of those people who needs to achieve a deficit on my fitness pal or see a more declining graph on happy scale. I'm still struggling with the all or nothing mentality. All right. So just to let you know, there is a video in the forums about when am I pregnant? What am I supposed to be doing? So right now, in my opinion, personally, um, I would say you shouldn't be focusing on trying to hit a calorie deficit. Uh, I have a video help. I'm pregnant. What should I do? <laughs> so I am going to include that in the notes for this episode. So help. I'm pregnant. What should I do? I want you to watch that video. Well, here's what I want to, to really you know, sell here to you or, 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 or put out here for you to hear. When you are creating another life, you don't need to eat in an, too much of an excess until really you get into that third trimester, which they highly, whether they think that the numbers are somewhere between 250 and 500 extra calories per day in that third trimester. The link that I put in there with that video kind of goes through what to try and do with your nutrition based on what dietitians recommend each stage of pregnancy. So at no point though, I will point out, do they say that you should focus on a calorie deficit? So that would be number one. You shouldn't really be focusing on a calorie deficit. Where they highly recommend that you had started is at a maintenance calories. So what I would actually encourage you to do, and I would encourage really all maintainers to do this, if you were to think about, uh, in this case, this is a, and this is a little different because she's in a special time of life where her weight really is going to change. So like for 10 months, your weight is going to ebb and flow, and then you're going to hit a period where it's just going to continue to go up a little bit here, a little bit there. And that is totally normal. So what I would encourage you to do is I would say, let's take a break from focusing on trying to hit a calorie deficit and maybe focusing on maintenance calories. Now, there is a great app coverage actually for people who are trying to create healthy relationships with food. Um, it's actually primarily geared toward eating disorders, but I will tell you it's exceptional. It's a really, really good app. I like it. Uh, it's called Recovery Record. And what it does is it allows you to write down what you ate and how you felt how hungry were you, all the mindset stuff that's going on while you're making your food decisions. And even though you might not have an eating disorder, this app could help bring a lot of awareness to why you're eating, what you're eating, and when you're eating and your food patterns. It would give you a great opportunity to write down what you're eating and kind of have that all in one place without the bars and the graphs and all that kind of stuff that's going to be quite sabotaging to you while you're in this very special place with your journey. Okay. There may be some for pregnancy, but honestly, I don't see unless they're just going to give you a bunch of checkoff boxes saying, yes, you ate your protein. Yes. You had your dairy. Yes. You had your fruits and vegetables. I don't really think they're going to offer that up as kind of a food based tracking type app. I could be totally wrong. I did search for that. Um, but nothing massive came up under pregnancy food tracking apps. So I would try using the, and, and I'll put a link to this, by the way, I would try and uh, use this app because I find it to be extremely good for those people who get weirded out by numbers, who struggle with um, seeing the graphs and the bars. And, and if they're more working on their mindset around food and wanting just to feel somewhat balanced with food, it's a great, great app. So that would be the first thing I would tell you to take a break. From the happy scale app, you don't really need to track your weight in the happy scale up because you know, it's only going to go up for the most part. <laughs> you, and here's the other thing. You're kind of screwing up your data and I'll explain why. Your being pregnant is a small chunk. It's, it's one small carved out piece of time, 10 months, give or take. Everything outside of that is unpregnant time. So you don't want to have pregnancy weight throwing off your non-pregnancy trend. Does that make sense? 
So you're kind of taking, you know, they owe the, uh, the expression, you're comparing apples to oranges. You quite literally are doing that. You can't say this is my happy scale weight because you have a ton of data in there probably before you were pregnant. Now you're pregnant, you're carrying a child, it's for this 10 month window, you really need to take a hiatus from putting data in there. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to go back and delete it all. Um, because really what that's going to do is that's not a fair comparison. It's not fair to say 10 months of pregnancy is now going to be thrown into the mix with non-pregnancy time. Better to have it only represent your non-pregnancy journey than part of your pregnancy journey, if that makes sense. Uh, it's kind of like if somebody were dealing with some kind of horrible illness, they get hospitalized, they're going through treatment and they drop 20 pounds. Well, that's kind of a, what we call out of the norm, right? It's an outlier period of time. Hopefully this person's recovering. Hopefully they're going to get back to being healthy again. It would be very unfair to pop those numbers in 20 pounds down within a very short period of time because they're sick. Uh, and needing medical attention. So you would not want to put those odd times in there because that doesn't pertain to your everyday normal. Okay. So the happy scale app ideally works best when you're putting in consistent data under consistent circumstances, not something like, oh, wow, I just ended up having a limb cut off. And, and now I weigh this much less, unless that's going to be your permanent new state of normal, then that makes sense, right? In that case, it would, unless you're going to get a prosthetic put in its place. So you really want everything to be fairly normal. Now, does that mean ebbs and flows in your personal life, something tragic happened? No, I'm talking about tragic illness. I'm talking about pregnancy. I'm talking about situations where something that's kind of outside of your control is going to augment your weight. Okay. That would not be a time I would put that in there. All right. So I would stop using happy scale app. I'd actually go back and delete all of the data from when you were pregnant and not count that. Um, I would try to do something like a recovery app. If you do not want to do the recovery app for whatever reason, paper and pencil journal, I would just write it down, do a little note, keep track of what you're eating. And maybe instead of focusing on calories. I mean, you could either go to maintenance calories, or even if you're in the third trimester, go to the, the kind of the extra calories, like they recommend in the, uh, the link with the video. But if you don't want to do that, okay, you could just go paper, pencil, go old school. Or what you could do is use something like the awesome points and really focus on giving yourself points for picking more nutritionally dense food. Did you get in so many servings of protein? Did you get in so many fruits and vegetables? Like do your tracking in a totally different format to encourage healthy choices versus punishing yourself for exceeding a calorie window that may have been okay when you weren't pregnant, but now really doesn't serve you, okay? So just wanna mention that. And what I'll do, like I said, I'm gonna include the link to that app uh, in the resources for this webinar, uh, webinar 305.